Hi everyone, I'm Deborah, and today I'll be sharing with you the daily devotional from Matthew 5, 27 to 37. I will read it. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. It has been said, anyone who divorces his wife must give her a certificate of divorce. But I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife except for sexual immorality, makes her the victim of adultery, and anyone who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to the people long ago, do not break your oath, but fulfill to the Lord the vows you have made. But I tell you, do not swear an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is God's throne, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make even one hair white or black. All you need to say is simply yes or no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. To be honest, this quarantine time has been probably the most mentally challenging time in my life so far and it seems much easier to put up a front like that everything is okay even though you know beneath the surface some issues are still there similarly i think it's easy to justify some of our sins by saying that you know we don't do some of the more apparent things like killing people even though under the surface we don't acknowledge that our thoughts against people still count as sin and that underneath there might still remain some heart issues, I guess. I think sometimes it just feels better to avoid doing the right thing because we like the instant gratification of our sin or we don't want to deal with the reality of our sin. But we know in our hearts that it's not right. Like even if God's telling you to do something or to not do something that you're not a fan of or that's difficult, it's easier to put it off and justify doing otherwise. If there is a will in our minds to not obey God, it seems like there's a way in our minds to go around that. So these are just some of the thoughts that have been prompted after I've read, you know, this passage. And so maybe we should ask God to change our hearts and to simply obey him. I feel like I read this passage more figuratively than literally, like to not actually cut off your hand or like gouge out your eyes, but I feel like it points to the simplicity of obeying God in a way, um, kind of like Oh, if you know you're sinning, then do something about it. Just like cut it off or like take it away kind of mentality. Um, I just think that sometimes I overcomplicate stuff and I realized this when I was babysitting because I was telling these kids to not do something that their mom told them to not do. And I was trying to reason with them. Well, yeah, of course she told them to to, uh, to not do these things for their own good, but also I was like, if you know that your mom doesn't want you to do that, then why do you still go on and do it? And I was like, huh. <laughs> but like a good parent, God wants the best for us, even if we sometimes don't believe it and we don't know why he's telling us those things, but he does it for our own good 
And yeah, it may be understandably difficult to obey. But when I told the kids that, I kind of stopped in my tracks. And I was like, if I put my sin in relationship with God in this way, it sounds really simple. Like, instead of complicating things, we can let our yes be a yes and our no be a no. Shouldn't just knowing what God wants be enough for me to obey? Hmm. So, it really challenged me. And first of all, I think we should identify what sins we are struggling with and ask God, how we should deal with them because maybe it calls for a perspective change or something practical for us to do. We should also ask him for humility because I think it takes a certain amount of it to be like, yeah, I do need God to help me with the sin that I'm struggling with or even to admit that we are struggling. And so I'm thinking about how simple it is then I'm like, why do I still do it then? <laughs> um, and I think that maybe it's so hard to listen because we've built habits or mindsets around it that make it difficult to detach ourselves from it. So if you find yourself there, like me, I guess, ask God to undo these habits and untangle these lies that you might be in so that you can better build things on the new creation that you are in Christ. This is something that I want to do as well. Thank you. <laughs>